Hi guys, in this video, we're gonna be going through all of the simple familiar questions that have ever been on an external exam from 2020 to 2024. So I'm assuming that you've watched every other video in this playlist first. The purpose of this video is just to apply the knowledge from all of the explanation videos to actually do some external exam questions so that you're fully confident with unit four, topic one, loans, investments, and annuities. So whenever you're doing any questions to do with loans, investments, and annuities, there's two things that you should be asking yourself. Is it long-term or short-term? And then what formula you should use. So let's start with this question. We've got determine the monthly repayments on a $350,000 home loan. Gonna stop there because it's a home loan and it's over 25 years. That tells me that it's gonna be a long-term loan and it's a reducing balance loan. So therefore, I've chosen this formula. It's an annuity formula where the N has a negative value in front of it, indicating it's going down. Well, that's how I remember it. So next part is just to define my variables. I can get I from the question. I is just the interest rate as a decimal per compounding period. And N is just gonna be 12 times 25 because it's monthly for 25 years. Now, because I'm trying to find M, I've got to move that entire big bracket over to the other side. Because it's M multiplied by that bracket, when I move it over, it's going to be divide. So that's going to be our value for M, and I've substituted my values. Now remember, you want to do this step by step in your calculator rather than all at once, just to reduce the risk of error. So once you've got the answer for that part, you can store it in your calculator. Then you can do the next part step by step. And finally, you can do 350 divided by the answer. You don't want to round off that value yet. You want to keep it stored as answer in your calculator because if we round off early, we're going to have some rounding error in our final answer. So once we plug all that into a calculator, we get that value. And therefore, the home loan repayments in this situation are that per month. Notice I've rounded off to two decimal places though for my final answer. Next question, uh, we've got use the effective interest rate formula. So that tells me straight away, I'm gonna use the effective interest rate formula from the formula sheet. And because we're comparing two different options, I would set up my question with option one and option two. That formula there is just straight off the formula sheet. I'd substitute my values in. So these questions are kind of easy. You just put in your interest rate as a decimal divided by the compounding period. And then for option one, because that's higher, that's gonna give us the better return. If this was a loan instead of an investment, we'd wanna be looking at the lower interest rate. But personally, I've never actually seen that come up. So we'd say, therefore, option one is the better return. If we wanna put the cherry on top, we could say option one is the better return because the effective interest rate is higher. Next question, we've been given a recurrence relation. So that's the ultimate hint that we're gonna be using a recurrence relation formula. For part A, it says, what would be the advertised interest rate per annum compounding monthly? So this is a bit of a curveball of a question, but you just gotta re remember that R is equal to one plus I. And in this case, R is just the value next to AN, which is 1.00375. So I can substitute that into the formula and then I'm trying to just solve for I. But, and this is why it's a bit of a curveball, because it's compounding monthly and we want to find the advertised interest rate per annum, when a bank advertises an interest rate, they don't advertise it as compounding weekly or compounding monthly, they just advertise it as an interest rate per annum. So this I part here is divided by 12. So if I rearrange this formula and solve for I, I've got to move the one over first and take it away, which is going to give us 0.00375. And then I've just got to move that 12 over and multiply, which is going to give us 0.045. So that's the interest rate as a decimal. We want to change that back to a percentage by timesing it by 100. So therefore, we could say that the advertised interest rate is 4.5% per annum. That's a bit of a curveball, and I didn't really go through any of those types of questions in my explanation videos but just something to note. So we've done part A, we worked out that was 4.5% per annum. Now for this question, part A and part B are not related at all. For part B, it says, how many months would it take for the value of the investment to exceed 51,000? This is where we use the calculator trick. So we wanna find when this recurrence relation first exceeds 51,000. The way to do that, we've gotta find A1. I've just substituted 50,000 in for A 
to find A1, we get that value. Then we're gonna use the answer feature on our calculator to repeat this to find A2. And if I keep hitting equals until the value first exceeds 51,000, eventually it does exceed 51,000 after six times. So that would mean that after six months, the value first exceeds 51,000. All right, for question 25, we've got a couple borrow money to complete home renovations. Their bank is loaned. As soon as I see loaned, and if I keep reading, it's got uh, for 15 years, that tells me it's long-term and it's a loan. So I'm gonna use the annuity formula and we need to find the amount of money borrowed. So we can state all of our variables. Those all just come straight from the question. And then we're gonna plug all of those into the formula and we're gonna calculate in order to find A. So I've plugged all of those into the formula. When I put that into a calculator, I get 150,000.29. So that's gonna be our answer. So for part B of this question, which is actually, once again, part A and part B are not related. For part B, we just need to write a recurrence relation for this situation. So to write a recurrence relation, we need to find the R value. And R is just one plus I. And we also know that from reading the question, the repayment amount, so capital R is 993.14. Therefore, that's our recurrence relation. And we could stop there. Next question, we've got Tyrone paid 50,000 deposit on a house valued at 570,000 and he borrowed the remainder as a reducing balance loan and it's over 25 years. So that tells us it's gonna be a long-term loan and it's a reducing balance loan. Therefore, we're gonna be using this formula again. So a little bit of a curveball here because he's already paid a 50,000 deposit on a house valued at 570,000, that would mean that he's only got 520,000 more to pay because he's already paid 50,000. So A is gonna be 520,000. I is just the interest rate as a decimal per compounding period, which I've now calculated. And N is equal to 25 times 12 because it's a 25 year loan compounding monthly. So now we just need to rearrange to find M. So once again, we move the big bracket over to the other side and divide. And when we do this in a calculator, we wanna do each part step by step just to reduce the risk of error. So I, I would do this line first, I would do that part second, and then I do that part third. And then when I put all of that into a calculator, I get 4125.578, etc., which would mean that therefore our monthly repayments for this loan is gonna be 4126. This question here is another effective interest rate question. I did a question earlier like this, so I'm not gonna go through this one. You could go back and look at the other one if you want to, but it's just the exact same process with new numbers. For this question here, we've got when a child is born, their parent deposits $3,000. Uh, it's compounding, so 4.2% compounding monthly if there are no further transactions. So because it says no further transactions, there's no regular deposits or withdrawals. And it's also going to be long term because it's the child's 18th birthday. So that would imply that we're going to have to use the compound interest formula. We're not going to be using the recurrence relation version because it's long term. So this one's just a regular old school compound interest question. We've got, we can plug in our values there. That all comes straight from the question. You can pause the video if you need to. And then we're just going to sub substitute those into the formula and solve, which gives us that value there. Now, we've got to read the question really, really carefully because if we stopped there, we would lose a mark. If we go back up to the question, it actually says calculate the amount of interest. So we've currently calculated the total amount that the child will have on his 18th birthday, not the interest. So remember that the total amount is the principal, the starting amount, plus the interest. Rearranging that formula, we could say that the interest that the child's gonna earn is the, is the total amount, so what he has, minus what he started with. So because he started with 3,000, that's gonna be the way to find interest, and therefore the interest is that value there. So that's our final answer. Next question, we've got a perpetuity earns interest quarterly at 5.2%. As soon as I see the word perpetuity, I know that it's gonna be a perpetuity question, and you don't get that on the formula sheet, but it's worth noting that. Honestly, perpetuity questions don't come up too often, but it's still worth just remembering that formula which I've unpacked in my video on perpetuities. You can go back up and watch that if you need to. So for part A, we need to determine the quarterly interest rate. This is kind of a little bit of a confusing curveball question, but all they want you to do here is because they've given us the interest rate as 5.2% per annum, they just want us to convert that to little i or lowercase i. So we just do 0 0.052 divide four, that gives us 0 0.013, which is 
1.3% when we change it to a percentage. So that's part A done, that's all we have to do. And part A in this case will help us to do part B. Now we need to calculate the value of the perpetuity. So that's our formula, because we want to find the value of the perpetuity, we've got to rearrange for P. Once we rearrange for P, that's going to be our formula. And then we're going to simply just substitute the values into this formula and our answer is 75,000. So the value of the perpetuity in this case is 75,000. Next question, we've got a reducing balance loan and we've got the words recurrence relation in part A. That tells me we're gonna use the recurrence relation formula and reducing balance loans, which is on the screen here. And it states in the question that AO, the starting amount is 15,000. So I'm gonna define my variables, the little i, is gonna be equal to 0.084 divided by 12, which is 0.07. Capital R is just the repayment amount, which from the question is 250. So we need to find R. So it's cool that we've found little i, but remember to find R, R is one plus i. So that means that R in this case is gonna be 1.007. Plugging that into our recurrence relation, we get this recurrence relation, and that's part A done. Now for part B, we need to calculate the loan balance after two months. So that means we've got to find A1 first, which I've done by just substituting 15,000 in for AO. Then we repeat that process once more to find A2, and we find that that's the value after two months. So for part C, it says use the reduction in the loan balance and the total repayments to determine the interest paid in the first two months. So we wanna find the interest paid. The interest paid is gonna be the current value minus what we should owe if the banks were being nice. So the current value is just A2, and then what we should owe. So if we had 15,000 and we weren't charged any interest and we just made two single repayments of 250, the amount that we should still owe is just gonna be 15,000 minus 500, because two payments of 250 is 500. So plugging that into a calculator, we get 208.99, and that's the interest that has been paid. In the next video, when I get a chance, I'm gonna go through the complex familiar and complex unfamiliar questions. Hopefully not too far away.